more extensive intermolecular hydrogen bonding which is present in carboxylic acid it is having more boiling point than corresponding aldehydes ketones aldehydes which is having comparable molecular mass if electron withdrawing groups are present the electron richness will become less and what happens the carboxyl group becomes more reactive the acid present in vinegar it is ethanoic acid or acetic acid right hexanoic acid it's used in the manufacture of nylon 66 Hello everyone this is Ambali Unnikrishnan from the department of chemistry so today i am back with the last session of the chapter aldehydes ketones and carboxylic acid so in the last session we started with carboxylic acids right that is the last part of the chapter and we discussed the nomenclature and as well as the methods of preparation of carboxylic acid so in today's session we are going to see the physical properties and chemical properties of carboxylic acid right so beginning with the physical properties so aliphatic means without ring structure that is straight chain or branched ones right so aliphatic carboxylic acids up to 9 carbon atoms are colorless liquids they are liquids okay at room temperature with unpleasant odors so up to c9 that is c1 to c9 carbons that is carboxylic acid containing containing one carbon atom to nine carbon atoms they are generally present as liquids and they have an unpleasant odor the higher acids are wax like solids and are particularly odorless due to their low volatility so if you have to get the odor or the smell means it must be volatile right it must be able to evaporate but the higher ones that is carboxylic acids having carbon the number of carbon atoms are about 9 they are solids and they will be less volatile right carboxylic acid have higher boiling liquids than aldehydes ketones and even alcohols of comparable molecular mass so they are higher boiling points they have higher boiling points now why it is that is it is due to more extensive association of carboxylic acid molecules through intermolecular hydrogen bonding so because of more extensive intermolecular hydrogen bonding which is present in carboxylic acid it is having more boiling point than corresponding aldehydes ketones aldehydes which is having comparable molecular mass the hydrogen bonds are not broken completely even in the vapor phase in fact most carboxylic acid exist as dimer in the vapor phase or in the aprotic solvent so they exist as dimer so as i told you they have the ability to form hydrogen bonds because of the carboxyl group present they can form hydrogen bonds and even in the vapor phase vapor phase means once it evaporates what should happen the hydrogen bonds should break but even if it is in the vapor phase the hydrogen bonds is not bre breaking that means what of course the bond is really strong right so you can see here r c o o h that is one carboxylic acid group and another one you are having r c o o h right so as you can see here from one carboxylic acid molecule oxygen having negative charge hydrogen having positive charge here positive here negative so there will be an intermolecular that is between two different molecules there is a hydrogen bond which is formed so in vapor phase also this bond will not be broken that is why it is having higher boiling points so carboxylic acid is the one which is having the highest boiling point so remember that clear now simple aliphatic carboxylic acids having up to four carbon atoms are miscible in water due to the formation of hydrogen bonds again why any organic compound is able to they are soluble in water is because of the formation of hydrogen bond so just now we discussed here also that is it is able to form hydrogen bonds with other molecules of carboxylic acid same way it is able to form hydrogen bonds with water as well right okay so that is why they are generally soluble but those are only the carboxylic acid having lesser number of carbon atoms the higher carboxylic acids are practically insoluble in water so the higher one more and more carbon atoms are there means of course it will be insoluble in water because of this alkyl or aryl group is hydrophobic in nature now due to the increased hydrophobic interaction of hydrocarbon part that is why they are less soluble benzoic acid the simplest aromatic carboxylic acid is nearly insoluble in cold water so what is benzoic acid this is benzoic acid right so of course aryl group is there that means of course it is going to be insoluble in cold water carboxylic acids are also soluble in less polar organic solvents like benzene ether alcohol chloroform so they may not be soluble in water but they are soluble in polar organic solvents like chloroform benzene etc clear moving on to the chemical properties of carboxylic acid so first we are going to study the reactions involving the cleavage of oxygen hydrogen bond that means we have r c o o h 
right so first we are going to discuss about the breakage of this bond that is oxygen hydrogen bond in the carboxyl group right so acidity the carboxylic acids evolve hydrogen with electro positive metals and form salts with alkalis they react with weaker bases such as carbonates and hydrogen carbonates to evolve carbon dioxide so because of this acidic nature acidic nature means what it is able to donate its h plus so as discussed oxygen hydrogen bond is going to break so h plus is going to be released so what is going to happen is when carboxylic acid reacts with highly electro positive metals like sodium potassium etc it will release hydrogen that is hydrogen gas h2 will be released now if it is reacting with alkalis it will form salts okay that is for example sodium hydroxide if it is reacting it will form sodium salt of that carboxylic acid salts will be formed now if it is reacting with weaker bases right like carbonates or hydrogen carbonates it will evolve carbon dioxide okay so let's see this reaction is used to detect the presence of carboxyl group in an organic compound so these reactions if hydrogen is evolved or carbon dioxide is formed or else the salt of carboxylic acid is formed we can confirm the presence of carboxyl group so in identification of functional group experiment in lab also we have done this when carboxylic acid or the organic solvent which is given to you is made to react with sodium bicarbonate carbon dioxide gas will be evolved you can see effervescence so that is how we confirm the presence of carboxylic acid right so let's see this is two moles of carboxylic acid reacts with sodium that is an ele highly electropositive metal what will happen you will get the sodium salt of carboxylic acid and hydrogen gas will be evolved clear now carboxylic acid can also react with a base strong base like sodium hydroxide you will get the sodium salt of the carboxylic acid again and water right so sodium salt of carboxylic acid will be formed now again carboxylic acid reacts with sodium bicarbonate so what will happen this hydrogen is going to be replaced by the sodium so you will get again sodium salt of carboxylic acid then you have one h here one h here and one oxygen together forms water and what else will be there co2 will be there carbon dioxide will be liberated now carboxylic acid dissociate in water to give resonance stabilized carboxylate anions and hydrogen ion so this is your carboxylic acid rcooh in water what will happen it will dissociate into carboxylate ion that is rcoo minus right rcooh in presence of water it will form carboxylate ion which will show resonance as you can see rc double bond o and what will happen because of this electronegativity difference here the shared pair of electrons will move towards oxygen and oxygen will get a negative charge so again what what can happen the there will be lone pair of electrons on the other oxygen that can form a double bond here so there can be a resonance which if, uh, so that there, there can be a resonance effect which acts between these two oxygen atoms so that is what is shown here that is r c and you have these three bonds and it is shown like this that means it can happen that is with this oxygen atom or this oxygen atom the resonance can take place so from this above reaction that we have discussed that is this one that is carboxylic acid when it reacts with water it forms hydronium ion this is h3o plus hydronium ion and the carboxylate ion so using this equation we are going to write the equilibrium equation so we have already studied this in class 11 so equilibrium constant can be written as the product of molar concentration of the products raised to their powers divided by the product of molar concentration of the reactants so what are the products here carboxylate ion and the hydronium ion so the molar concentration of h3o plus into rcoo minus that is a carboxylate ion divided by what is the reactants here carboxylic acid and water so it will be molar concentration of water and carboxylic acid ion. now we are taking water to the other side to the numerator so what happens K equilibrium into water you will get. What is that? That is equilibrium constant of acid, right? Ka, which is equal to product of molar concentration of hydronium ion and carboxylate ion divided by the molar concentration of the carboxylic acid. So, where K equilibrium is equilibrium constant and Ka is the acid dissociation constant. For convenience, the strength of an acid is generally indicated by pKa okay value rather than its ka value so how is pk and ka related pka is equal to minus log of ka as you can see here it is minus log of ka so once from the equilibrium equation equilibrium constant equation we can calculate ka what it is dissociation constant of an acid once that is calculated using this equation we can calculate the 
PKA value of an asset from which we can tell how strong or weak the asset is. So smaller the PKA value, stronger will be the asset, the better it is as a proton donor. Strong assets have PKA value less than 1. So what you have to remember, stronger assets will have high KA value and very low PKA value. So if the PKA value is less than 1, we can say that the assets are very strong. Moderately strong assets have PKA values between 1 and 5 and weak assets will have PKA value between 5 and 15 the PK value will be very high. Extremely weak acids will have it more than 15. Carboxylic acid are amongst the most acidic organic compounds. So carboxylic acids of course will have the PK value less than 1. Moving on to the next one. Carboxylic acids have higher acidity compared to phenol. Now if you are comparing phenols, phenol, phenols are also acidic. We have discussed this in the alcohols, phenols and ethers chapter. Now coming to carboxylic acid, if you are comparing carboxylic acids and phenols, carboxylic acids are more acidic. Why is that? So this is an important question. Reason, the negative charge in carboxylate ion is delocalized over two electronegative oxygen atom. So you can see it is RCO. O minus. This is the carboxylate ion. So just now we have already discussed the resonating structures. So because of the electronegative difference, this can come here. So what will happen? You will get a negative charge over here and this negative charge can come as a bond here. So what is the other resonating structure you can get? It will be R C O minus and double bond O here. So it can either come there or here. The resonating structures will happen between two oxygen atoms in carboxylate ion, right? Whereas it is less effectively delocalized in the phenoxide ion between one oxygen atom and a less electronegative carbon atom. In phenoxide ion, what is phenoxide ion? This is phenoxide ion, right? So the resonance is happening between this oxygen atom and the carbon atom which is present here. So comparing these two, you have two oxygen atoms between which the resonance is taking place, which are both more electronegative. Here you have it between one oxygen and one carbon which is less electronegative. So comparing these two, of course, carboxylate ion will be more acidic, right? So thus the carboxylate ion is more stabilized than phenoxide ion. So carboxylic acids are more acidic than phenols. So more the resonating structures, more it will be stable. So that is why carboxylic acid is more stable. Hence, they will be more acidic. Clear? Moving on to the next one. Effects of substituents on acidity of carboxylic acid. So, carboxylic acids are COOH, the general formula. And if there are any other substituents also present. Right? For example, if an electron withdrawing group is present or if an electron donating group is, is present, what will happen to the acidity of this carboxylic acid? Let's see. So, electron withdrawing groups, okay, that is they take up electrons from the carboxyl group, increases the acidity of carboxylic acids by stabilizing the conjugate base through delocalization of negative charge by inductive and resonance effect. So, electron withdrawing group means already the carboxyl group is electron rich because of the presence of two oxygen atoms. So electron withdrawing groups will take up the extra electrons from the carboxyl group. So what happens? The carboxyl group will be more available for reactions, right? It will be more reactive in that case. So if electron withdrawing groups are present, the electron richness will become less and what happens? The carboxyl group becomes more reactive. Clear? Now, conversely, electron donating groups decrease the acidity by destabilizing the conjugate base. So, electron donating groups, it will give extra electrons to the carboxyl group, which will make it much more deactive or less reactive, right? So, electron withdrawing group stabilizes the carboxylate anion and strengthens the acid. So, if electron withdrawing groups are present, the acid will become more stronger or else the acidity will become more. If electron donating groups are pre present, the acidic character will become less. Electron withdrawing groups like nitro groups are present means more and more it will be acidic. Electron donating groups like alkyl groups, more alkyl groups are present means of course the acidity will decrease. Clear? Now, the order of the effect of groups in increasing acidity is so you have phenyl which is least acidic. Then you have the halogens that is iodine, bromine, chlorine, fluorine and then you have cyano, CN minus, then you have nitro, then you have CF3. So comparing all this itself you can see here all of these are electron donating groups right and you have the electron withdrawing groups like nitro, CF3 all of towards the end. So if you have the nitro or cyano groups present in your carboxylic acid, they will be more acidic. So this is the order. Thus the following acids are arranged in the order of decreasing acidity based on their pKa, pKa value. That is in the decreasing order. So this is the order CF3COH having the highest acidity, then CCL3COH, 
CHCl2 COH NO2 nitro comes right nitro will be electron withdrawing so it is more acidic then you have uh, NC that is cyano group is there CH2COOH then you have FCH2COH CLCH3COH bromine carboxylic acid is there then you have formic acid CLCH2CH2COH is there then you have benzoic acid then C6HY CH2COH CH3COH that is acidic acid then you have propanoic acid all of that clear so more alkyl groups are present means see you can see that comes in the end alkyl groups are electron donating so they are least acidic compared to the ones having halogens or nitro groups clear now the direct attachment of groups such as phenyl or vinyl to the carboxylic acid increases the acidity of corresponding carboxylic acid due to the resonance effect so directly vinyl group or phenyl group now what is vinyl group as you can see here ch2 double bond ch and the functional group is directly attached to the carbon atom which is part of a double bond so that is called as vinyl so you can see what happens this double bond also can donate its electrons towards the carbon atom and more resonance will be there hence more acidity here also what happens here so here is the next resonance structure which is shown here and this bond can come back to here see in the first structure you can see this double bond is shifted here so what happens as the carbon is losing its electron carbon will get a positive charge which is shown here now this can come back here also and here also what is happening the oxygen can move here and from this oxygen which is known pair as present this can move here also so resonance more resonance will take place hence more acidity will be present now this is because of greater electronegativity of sp2 hybridized carbon to which carboxyl carbon is attached the presence of electron withdrawing group upon the phenyl of aromatic carboxylic acid increases their acidity while electron donating groups decreases their acidity in aromatic carboxylic acids also the same thing happens if electron withdrawing groups are present acidity will increase electron donating groups are present acidity will decrease so let's consider here this is benzoic acid simplest one then you have 4 methoxy benzoic acid that is on the fourth carbon you have a methyl group which is present and you have nitro also so comparing these three which one will have the highest acidity we ourselves can predict so you have an alkyl group which is electron donating this is electron donating here you don't have any other substituents and nitro is electron withdrawing so we just studied now electron withdrawing and donating if you are comparing electron withdrawing will give you more acidity so this will be the order of acidity so because of that nitro group containing carboxylic acid will be having the highest acidity then benzoic acid then comes the alkyl one clear now moving on to the next set of reaction that is reactions involving cleavage of carbon oxygen hydrogen bond that is again you have r c double bond o o h so now there is going to be a breakage of this carbon o h bond clear now the formation of anhydride carboxylic acids on heating with mineral acids mineral acids uh, such as H2SO4 and H3PO4, what happens or with P2O5 gives corresponding anhydride. Now, what is anhydride? First of all, it can be RCO, -O -R -C -O. so this is an example of an anhydride, right? So, how it is formed? So, you have taken one molecule of acetic acid here another molecule of acetic acid here now what is happening in presence of some mineral acid or p2o5 if you are heating it what you are going to get is anhydride anhydride means what is going to happen here is ch3coo will remain here and the ch3coo will remain here what will happen that is going to combine here and an anhydride will be formed and water will be removed from this so this is the method of forming anhydride now next one is esterification esterification we have already studied in alcohols as well that is acids and alcohols combine together to form ester as well as water so it is a reversible reaction we have studied this Carboxylic acid are esterified with alcohols or phenols in the presence of a mineral acid such as concentrated sulfuric acid or HCl gas as a catalyst. So you have RCOH and ROH that is alcohol in presence of acid that is uh, sulfuric acid what you are going to get ester and water will be removed. So you can see RCOOH and OH R dash that is your alcohol what is going to happen H2O is going to be removed water is going to be removed so you will have RCOO R dash water is going to be removed so this is the esterification so you will get an ester smell that is how another test to identify carboxylic acid esterification is another test another one was sodium bicarbonate test we have already discussed right 
Now, reaction with PCl5, PCl3 and SOCl2. That is so. Let us see the reactions with PCl5, PCl3 and SOCl2. The hydroxyl group of carboxylic acid is replaced by chlorine atom when treated with PCl5, PCl3 or SOCl2. In all of this, what are you having? This is chlorine. So, what is going to happen is RCOOH in this OH is going to be replaced by Cl and you are going to get an acid chloride that is RCOCl. That is a product you are going to get and you will have byproducts also. So, based on whether you are taking PCL5, PCL3 or SOCL2. Clear? So, thionyl chloride. What is thionyl chloride? SOCL2. It is called as thionyl chloride. Is preferred because the other two products are gaseous and escape the reaction mixture making the purification easy. So, let us understand this. Carboxylic acid when it reacts with PCL5, you are going to get R. COCl that is H is going to be replaced by Cl. So, you will get an acid chloride. What are the byproducts? PCL3 and HCl will be formed. So, it is important to remember this byproducts as well. Now, if it is reacting with PCL3, you will get of course acid chloride and phosphorus acid that is H3PO3. Now, if it is reacting with thionyl chloride, this reaction is important. You are going to get acid chloride. SO2, sulfur dioxide gas and HCl. Both of these are gases and it will escape from the reaction mixture. So, it will become easy for the purification of your acid chloride. So, compared to the other two reactions, it is this reaction that is reaction with thionyl chloride which is preferred because the byproducts are SO2 and HCl which are both gases and it becomes easy for the purification. So, this is very very important to remember in your examination point of view as well. So, thionyl chloride reaction is preferred. The next one is reaction with ammonia. Carboxylic acid reacts with ammonia to form ammonium salt. First ammonium salt will be formed which on further heating gives amides. Okay. So, what are amides? RCONH2. This is called as amide. So, let us see. Acetic acid reacts with ammonia. First what will be formed? Ammonium salt will be formed. That is NH3 gets added up to this H and form NH4 plus. So, you will have CH3CO minus and NH4 plus. That is ammonium salt which is formed. Now, when we are heating it, in the next step we are going to heat, water will be removed, H2O will be removed and you will get the corresponding amide will be obtained. So, now we are taking benzoic acid reacts with ammonia, first you are going to get the salt, right? So, this NH3 will be added to this H, you will have COO minus and NH4 plus you are going to get. That is this one. Now, to this water will be removed. So, what you will get again? Amide will be obtained. Now, another example on both sides you are having the carboxylic acid. That is on the first and second carbon atom. This is a diol to which ammonia is added. Now, what is going to happen? This NH3 is going to be added to here as well as here. So, you will get the salt here and here. Right. And from both of this water will be removed and you will get amide on the first as well as the second carbon atom. This is called as thalamide. Clear? So, this is the reaction with ammonia. Moving on to the next one, reduction. Carboxylic acid are reduced to primary alcohols by lithium aluminium hydride or better with diborane. So, lithium aluminium hydride is used as a very good reducing agent which will reduce carboxylic acid directly to primary alcohols. So, diborane does not easily reduce functional groups such as ester, nitro, halo, etc. Sodium borohydride does not reduce the carboxyl group. Okay. So, you have lithium aluminium hydride which is best for this reaction and you have diborane also which is B2H6. Either of this you can use for reducing carboxylic acid to the primary alcohol. So, this is a very good reducing agent and you have diborane which is used for carboxylic acid only. It does not easily reduce the functional groups in nitro, halo, ester, etc. And you have sodium borohydride that is NaBH4 which does not reduce carboxylic acid to functional group that is um, alcohol group, right? So, you have carboxylic acid in presence of lithium aluminum hydride or diborane. What is going to happen? Primary alcohol is obtained. Clear? Now, the reactions involving the breakage of COOH group itself, okay? So, the first one is D carboxylation. So, again something is going to be removed. What is decarboxylation? We are going to remove carbon dioxide. CO2 is going to be removed. So, you can see here carboxylic acids lose carbon dioxide 
to form hydrocarbons when their sodium salts are heated with soda lime. What is soda lime? Sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide combined together form soda lime. In the ratio 3 is to 1. NaOH3 is to 1 calcium oxide we have to take. This reaction is known as decarboxylation. So, this is very important reaction. You need to know what is the reagent that you are using in decarboxylation. That is soda lime. Now, what is soda lime? It is a mixture of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide. Right. So, Sodium salt of carboxylic acid. We start with that. Sodium salt of carboxylic acid reacts with soda lime. That is a mixture of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide. What you are going to get? Carbon dioxide will be removed. That is CO2 will be removed. And what will be present? RH will be formed. That is RH. What it is going to be? So, it is going to be a hydrocarbon. So, let us take an example. CH3 COOH I am taking. What is going to happen? It is going to react with NaOH and calcium oxide. So, what is going to happen? Carbon dioxide is going to remove. You will get CH3 and the hydrogen. So, what it is actually? Methane will be formed, right? And sodium bicarbonate will be present as a byproduct which is obtained from the soda lime that we are using. Now, the next one is Koch electrolysis. On electrolysis of an aqueous solution of alkali metal, salts of carboxylic acid, salts undergo decarboxylation forming hydrocarbons containing twice the number of carbon atoms present in the alkyl group of acid. So, this is also another method in which you can get a hydrocarbon having twice the number of carbon atoms present in the carboxyl group. The next one is halogenation. So, this is a very important reaction and is of course a named reaction. Hell Wolhard Zelinsky reaction. It is also in short form called as HBZ reaction. So, this is very important. That is basically halogenation is what is going to take place. So, carboxylic acid having an alpha hydrogen. So, having alpha hydrogen is important are halogenated at the alpha position on treatment with chlorine or bromine in the presence of small amount of red phosphorus to give the alpha halo carboxylic acid. Okay. So, what is going to happen? Halogenation is going to take place in the alpha carbon atom. So, let us see here RCH2COOH. So, this is the carbon atom containing the functional group. So, the adjacent one, this is going to be our alpha carbon. So, there is of course a presence of alpha carbon. Right. So, now let us consider formic acid. HCOH. There is of course no alpha carbon atom here. So, this won't undergo this particular reaction HVZ. So, let us see here alpha carbon. To this alpha carbon, the halogen atom is going to be attached. So, either we can add X2 it is shown here that is chlorine or bromine in presence of red phosphorus. What is going to happen? The halogen is going to be added that is the chlorine or bromine is going to be added to the alpha carbon atom. So, this is called as HVZ reaction or hell wolhard zelinsky reaction. Now, moving on to the next one that is ring substitution. Aromatic carboxylic acids undergo electrophilic substitution reactions in which the carboxyl group acts as a deactivating and meta directing group. Okay. So, carboxylic acids are meta directing group. They do not undergo Friedel Crafts reaction because the carboxyl group is deactivating and the catalyst aluminum chloride gets bonded to the carboxyl group. So, they do not undergo friedel crafts alkylation or acylation because of the presence of carboxyl group and they are deactivating hence they direct the incoming electrophile towards the meta position. Okay. So, you have benzoic acid first we are going to nitrate it. So, we will use nitrating mixture that is concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. Nitro group will be added in the meta position right. So, this will be added in the meta position. Now, you have carboxylic acid that is which one it is again benzoic acid. The halogen is going to be added that will be also added to the meta position. So, what you have to remember carboxylic acids are meta directing groups clear. So, now Moving on to the last part that is different uses of carboxylic acid. Methanoic acid is used in rubber, textile, dyeing, leather and electropilating industries. Now, ethanoic acid as, as a solvent as in vinegar in food industry. So, what is the acid present in vinegar? It is ethanoic acid or acetic acid, right? Hexanoic acid is used in the manufacture of nylon 66. Now, Higher fatty acids that which is have, having more number of carbon atoms for the manufacture of soaps and detergents. And you have esters of benzoic acid which is used in perfumery. Esters of course it has a very good fragrance that is used in preparing perfumes. And sodium benzoate it is used as a 
food preservative. So, these are few uses of the substances that is different carboxylic acid which we have studied now. So, by this we come to an end to this chapter aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acid. So, this is a very important chapter and it is one of the most important chapter in organic chemistry. So, I hope the concepts that I have covered in this chapter is clear for you. So, in the next session let us meet with a new chapter. So, that is all for today. Thank you.